So now y'all come into my kitchen. This is cooking today. Hi, welcome to cooking today. I'm glad you're here. Happy Wednesday to you. Y'all were making steak today. Don't we love steaks? Oh my goodness. Not just steaks, but we are making tender filet mignon with delicious sauteed asparagus and a little bit of garlic. Butter, garlic and butter today are the bells of the ball. They are going to flavor our meat. They're going to flavor our asparagus. We're going to baste our steaks in butter and garlic today. Oh, you just cannot beat those flavors, am I right? So good. And y'all, there is nothing better than filet mignon. Arguably, it's the most desirable part of, you know, cut of beef, wouldn't you say? As a matter of fact, filet mignon is French for tender filet. And that is the reason that we love it so much, isn't it? I mean, don't you just love a filet? It's so tender. And one of the keys to cooking a filet, and we're gonna actually do these inside. We're not even gonna grill them. We're just gonna do them inside, in a pan, and then finish them in the oven. And the key is to get a really good hard sear on the outside, and it helps hold in the moisture. And then we're just gonna finish off the insides um, in the oven. So part of how we prep our filet is to get really good color, really good flavor and a lot of moisture is that we want to salt and pepper the outsides of them really well. Now actually this this filet on this side is a little bit thinner. Um, I actually got these pre-packaged but if you can go to your butcher and you can have someone cut them for you, ask for at least an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half and if you're feeling brave and like a rarer inside you can get a two inch filet. Delicious meat. This one is a little thinner. This one is actually probably a little bit more um, of, the, of the thickness that I prefer, um, probably about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half or so. And so here are some keys to a good filet inside and outside as well. So I have these sitting out. What I think is a really great way to prep this meat is to actually line your sheet pan with your wire rack. You know, we have this on here all the time for a million different purposes. And then let your steak sit uncovered in your fridge at least overnight. If not for a couple of days, you're kind of aging your steak. You know, you go and you hear about how they're aging them. You're letting them dry out. Um, and <laughs> this is what you're not gonna, you're gonna think this doesn't work this way. It's a little bit of an oxymoron. But when you let the steaks dry out, they actually are more moist. Isn't that interesting? You're letting the outside dry out, and so you're gonna get a good, good crisp sear on the outside, which is gonna retain moisture, and you're gonna have a really good tender steak on the inside. So, at least overnight on a sheet pan lined with a wire rack, completely uncovered, okay? And then, when we're gonna get ready to cook these, I have kosher salt, which is flaky and we want a crust. Steak is so good when there's that salty bite. You know what I mean? That salty bite that's so delicious. That is what we want. So I am putting a really good coating of flaky kosher salt on the outside of the steak on this side, and we're gonna do a good pepper as well. And we're not marinating. We're not putting garlic on them. We're not doing anything else on the outsides. This is all we're doing. No rubs, nothing, just plain old salt and pepper. It's just the best that there is. Then I'm gonna turn that over. It's all padded in well. Turn it over and then we're gonna go again. Salt and pepper on the other side, okay? And then we're just gonna let that salt and pepper sit on our steak for 30 minutes or so. It's just gonna kind of soak into the meat for our good crust and our good flavor. So we're gonna do this side as well. Mm. And I'll have to tell y'all, this is so funny. Um, we never feed our kids steak at home, ever. Like my poor children, we have three. We never fix them steak at home, ever. So Sam and I would get it, you know, if we would go out on a date when we had the kids at home with babysitters. So my kids never, ever got steak. 
And so, no, we would do super inexpensive cuts of steak, you know, and put them in fajitas or something. But when, when my two big kids went to college and we were left with our youngest, he's 17, one of the jokes was that we were going to have fillets every night because it was just Isaac and, you know, third babies. I mean, there's, there are fewer mouths to feed when your two big ones are gone. So the joke is that Isaac gets steak every night, and we do eat it a lot. <laughs> Don't tell Grace and Luke. Sorry, guys. We love you. But that was just a lot of, that was a lot of babies to feed steak to. You know what I mean? So I actually made these the other night for me and Isaac when Sam was gone, and we had our own little mom-son date at home, and it's outstanding. This is the best way to cook meat. You are absolutely going to love this. He loved it. You know, third baby. We're treating him well, giving him steak. So we're going to let these sit for a few minutes or so on the counter. When we come back, we're going to talk about our skillet. We're going to talk about our asparagus and put together the most delicious fillets and asparagus. When we come back, this is cooking today. Welcome back to Cooking Today. We're making pan-seared filet mignon today, basted in butter and rosemary and garlic, which is outstanding. And we're gonna also pair it with a little bit of asparagus. Easy stovetop method, a little bit of flavor. We're just gonna get them a little bit crisp tender, not overdone and not roasted. We've roasted before, but we're just gonna do a little bit. We just want them a little bit crisp and that's what I just love. It's such a good bite. Okay, so we have our filets that we're letting sit at room temperature for just a little bit, just basically so that the salt and the pepper on the outside, a good thick crust, can kind of tenderize the meat. And then that is gonna help create a really good sear for us in our pan. The key, the key, the key, the key, is to have a cast iron skillet screaming hot. Screaming hot meaning if you touched it, you'd scream your brains out. Is that what that means? <laughs> Do we think that's what that means? Screaming hot, probably so, wouldn't you bet? I'm getting nods from the cameraman. We think we agree that that's probably what that means. Don't touch it, but it needs to be smoking. Like you need to see it start to smoke. So we're gonna let that get going. It's over medium high heat, okay? Then we have our steaks hanging out. And then what we're gonna do, this is one of the fun things, the greatest flavor. This I actually learned on Food Network. This is not my um, technique. I learned this from Jeffrey Zakarian. He is on Food Network. He's one of my favorite chefs on there. He knows his stuff. Do y'all watch him? He is the best. And I actually got to meet him and got a signed copy of his cookbook. And, you know, I fangirled a little bit when I met him and his lovely wife, Margaret, um, when I went to Chicago um, this spring. Anyway, he is great. He knows his stuff. And this is the method that he uses when he cooks steaks. And all I can say is it's no wonder that he has countless restaurants and that he's the man because this is delicious. So as our skillet is heating, I have one clove of garlic that all I'm gonna do is mash it. I don't want it to cook in there. I don't want there to be little pieces of it. I don't want it to burn, but we mashed it because what that does is it just starts to release some of its natural liquids and oils. Mm. Okay, that's gonna hang out. I have four tablespoons of butter right here. This is gonna hang out for a minute. Have y'all made steaks like this before? You, will, you may struggle to ever go back to something different. You just wait till you taste this. Oh, so good, I can't wait to show you. And then here is a stem of rosemary. Mm, 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 mm. Rosemary to me reminds me so much of the holidays. So many good things that the holidays have that smell, don't they, and that flavor. Okay, we're gonna let this hang out for just a minute and we're letting our skillet get hot. In the meantime, we're gonna cook asparagus, but I wanted to show you how to store asparagus at home. There is a way, believe it or not, to keep your asparagus nice and fresh and perky and crisp and ready to go until you're ready to cook it. So, you know, you get your asparagus at the grocery like this in its bag, you wanna keep the bag that it came in, okay? And then, you want to take jars. Now, I just have these little small wide mouth jars like this. Um, I don't know, these are ball jars, however many ounces these are, but something with a wide mouth. And you wanna just put about an inch of water in the bottom. Not a ton, but just enough that the very bases of your asparagus stems get water. 
And then you can remove your rubber band and then store them like flowers. You want their tips, the very ends of them, these bottoms of these stalks to be in the water. And so because I don't have one container, if you had like maybe a little, like a glass pitcher or something like that, you could, you know, put them all in one, but I don't, I like these little shorter jars for my refrigerator. It just makes it easier for me to have room. So you're gonna put those in a little bit of water to keep them fresh, just like that. And then when you set them in your refrigerator, you need to take your bag and cover them back up. And that helps keep them moist, humid, like have some humidity on them, some moisture on them, and keeps them nice and fresh until it's time to use them. How about that? Did you know that? Okay, so that's the way you're going to store your asparagus in the grocery store. That's your little how-to, but we want to cook with them, don't we? Oh yes, here we go, my skillet is getting hot. I can start to smell the heat of it. So, once you are ready to cook with your asparagus, we are going to take them out of our little jars. And then you can do a couple of things. You can just totally trim them, which I generally do. I'm a knife girl, I just prefer to use my knife. But if you're kind of curious about where you should trim it, Generally, if you'll take an asparagus and just pop it, it's gonna kind of naturally break where that kind of woody, tough stalk is. And so you can do that if you want to, all the way down your asparagus if you would like, and it's gonna pop right where it needs to. Or what I like to do, I like to do a couple of those so that I can kind of see about where they need to go, I'm gonna grab a pan where they need to break, and then I take my whole, my whole bundle and I just cut the, cut the ends right off. So generally speaking, they were about a half an inch or so and we're cutting the ends of those off. So I'm gonna trim these. Our skillet is screaming hot. I can start to smell it. It is smoking, as a matter of fact. And then when we come back, we are going to sear these steaks. We're going to flavor them in butter and garlic and rosemary. And then we're just going to do a real simple, easy saute on our asparagus and call it a day. Y'all, this meal is lickety split, loads of flavor. So come back and join us. It's cooking today. Welcome back. We're making filet mignon today with sauteed asparagus. Butter and garlic are the bells of the ball. Today we're flavoring everything in butter and garlic with a little bit of rosemary. Doesn't that sound delicious? We have a screaming hot skillet. I'm sure you can see it is smoking and that's what we want. You will also be able to see if you've got a good cast iron skillet that a lot of the moisture that's down inside there starts to kind of surface. That's what you want in a cast iron skillet. I also have my big brazier over here with a little bit of butter in the bottom of it and I've trimmed my asparagus and we're just gonna saute those in a little bit of butter. Easy y'all, salt, pepper. I'm gonna drop a mashed garlic down in there just to kind of flavor that butter a little bit. You know what, let me do that right now. Let's do that right now. I'm gonna mash my garlic and we'll get it down in that butter right away so that it flavors the butter that's going to saute, you know, that our asparagus are gonna saute in. And again, I'm just squishing it, see, mashing it. That way it makes it easy to kind of fish it out of there at the end, because you don't wanna eat it, you just wanna taste it. Okay, so we'll do that, we'll let that do its thing. Now, are you ready? We decided in the break that screaming hot may also mean that when the fire alarm goes off during our cooking show that we may run out of here screaming. It's happened, believe it or not. And sometimes we have to stand and, and like fan the back door. But it's just the truth, but good cooking, you know, smokes up and that's what we want. Okay, waiting in the wings, four tablespoons of butter, a smashed clove of garlic and a big beautiful sprig of rosemary. I'll show you what we're gonna do with this in a minute. We have our two seasoned salted and peppered steaks. And we have our screaming hot skillet, okay? Here are all of the cast of characters. Here we go. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Yep, yep, yep. Now, this is key on your steaks. You're so tempted, I know we are, to stand there and like peek and look underneath it and move it around and all that and it sticks and we think, oh my gosh, I've done something wrong. It's sticking. Well, if you're picking it up and moving it and it is stuck to the pan, it's not ready to be turned. When it's time to turn it, it will actually create that crust and that's what we're hoping for and it will naturally release itself from the pan. Isn't that fun how God did that? <laughs> Isn't he so smart when he created the, the, the cooking process of, of searing? He just made it easy for us, didn't he? So, I bet God eats filet mignon, don't you? I would bet. Banqueting table, all that good stuff. Okay, so we're letting these sear. They're going to sear for about two minutes or so. They're going to be good and dark, and that's what we want. The oven is set to four, uh, 350. It's a lower temperature. You could even do 325 if you're kind of, you lean more toward the rarer side of your meat that you prefer. I do 350 and I cook mine medium to about an internal temperature of about 135 to 140. Then I remove it and we'll tint them and the, the temp will go up another few degrees because don't overcook your filet mignon. It's too good of a cut of meat to overdo it. If you like something really well done, do not spend the money on a, on a filet. Okay, now, here we go. Oh, here, you know what? I'm gonna throw these in. Let's throw in our asparagus. And we're just gonna saute these, y'all. There's not a lot of skill to this, not a lot of know-how. We're just gonna cook them down until they're tender a little bit. I'm gonna throw some salt on them. And then right at the end, we can squeeze a bit, little bit of lemon on them. Now, ready? After I preached it, y'all, about the release, See how we're looking. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Look at this. Okay, Sarah Black, our dark, dark sear. I'm having trouble getting my, my scooters up under there. Yeah, well, there we go. Look how easy that came off. Now, see that pretty sear? Here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna drop, get ready for the smoke. We're gonna drop our butter in there, our clove of garlic, Our rosemary, we'll just get that right down in the middle. And we're gonna let that flavor our steaks. This, I mean, if you could smell it, look at my spoon, it's on fire practically. Now, we're gonna get that going. And then, we wanna take our spoon and just baste our steaks while they're cooking for their like minute or two on the bottom side. We're going to baste, baste, baste in this butter and garlic and rosemary and add, ooh, I burned my finger. Y'all burned your finger, surely. Okay, so look, we're searing, 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 basting, 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 and then all we have to do is take those out and put them on our sheet pan back over here on our sheet pan. We're going to give them another minute on their bottom side. Then we're going to put them in the oven and bake them for just five or six minutes, maybe not even that long, and check them with a good meat thermometer. And then we're going to take them out. We're going to go ahead and stir up and saute out our, um, our asparagus, give them a little whir. And then when we come back, I can't wait to show you what we're going to just put on the top. Butter, garlic, and rosemary. They're the bells today. This is cooking today. Welcome back. We're just wrapping up filet mignons at home with really good sauteed asparagus. Easy. Literally just butter, mashed garlic, some salt in a big um, braiser until they were kind of just tender but has a little bit of still good crisp right there in the middle. And then we cooked our steaks. We braised or seared them really well in our cast iron skillet and then finished them off in the oven to the inter internal temperature of about 135. And then we're gonna, we let them tint for a minute so that they would, um, you know, the internal temp would get up nice and medium, which is what we want. So how I plate this is asparagus. A little bit 
of lemon juice. I don't want it to be really citrusy, but the brightness of that little bit of lemon is just delicious. Take our steak, set it right on top, and then in my skillet that was left over, I wiped that out. I added a little bit more butter, a fresh garlic, and a fresh rosemary, and let that just melt. And we're just gonna spoon it right over our steaks and our asparagus. Add a little shaved parm and you're all set for a delicious filet at home. I hope you'll try it at home. Love every bite. This is Cooking Today.